everybody, I'm back today for Newton's Nook, and today we're going to be using this cute Autumn Newton stamp set, as well as the coordinating die, the falling leaves stencil, and I'm going to be using the land borders uh, die set. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm using a piece of Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink watercolor cardstock, and I'm using some tumbled glass Distress Ink, and I'm just going to smoosh that down onto my mat and spray it with a little bit of water, and then I'm going to use a piece of acetate to pick that up. I'm also using the smooth side of the Distress Ink paper. I'm not using the rough textured side. So I'm just going to smoosh that down onto the background, kind of keeping it off to the right hand side. I'm just going to kind of create a sky background here, and then I'm just going to heat set that with my heat tool. And then when that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and tape my paper down, and then I'm going to tape the stencil down. And I'm going to be selecting um, parts of the images from the stencil. I'm not going to be stenciling the whole thing. So kind of selective stenciling, you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that down. And then I'm going to use some Distress Oxide inks in Wild Honey, Fossilized Amber, Peeled Paint, and Fired Brick. And I'm using some mini ink daubers here. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick up your color of ink and you're just going to go in randomly select the leaves that you want on your background and you're going to kind of push the dauber in or swirl it around. Now this stencil has a bunch of tiny little dots in between the leaves and you want to make sure as you're daubing your leaves that you, if you hit part of a circle or another leaf, you want to go ahead and fill that in because that will just overall give you a cleaner look to your card where you're not going to have some stray, it's just going to look like stray ink splatters on your card. So just kind of note that as you're doing it and you're just going to vary with your colors. You can have some colors overlap if you want to make the leaves double colored. Just kind of go along. Um, you could do this using the whole background, but I just selectively pick some to kind of make like the leaves are blowing through the sky. So then once you have them all daubed out where you want them, you're going to very carefully lift the stencil because this is pigment ink. And then you just want to run it under some water and it'll rinse right off. And then you're going to go ahead and heat set that with the heat tool. Um, this is a pigment based ink, so it will smear very easily. So once I have that heat set, then I'm going to go ahead and add a few splatters of water to it. And instead of dabbing the water up like I normally would with a paper towel, I'm actually going to just straight heat set the water. And that's going to help give that ox oxidized effect that the inks do. Okay, so go ahead and finish that up just by heat setting that there. Then I'm going to run it through my Big Shot with a stitch rectangle die. This is just one that's been laying on my desk. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the um, grassy area that my little Newton is sitting on. And I had a piece of the Tim Holtz Distress Ink watercolor cardstock in the wood grain laying on my desk in my previous project, so that's what I used. I added some peeled paint Distress Oxide ink to it. This one here, my scrap, I've already die cut it with that land border die, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse that extra piece. No sense in wasting your extras on your desk. So I'm gonna add some more peeled paint, and then I'm gonna spritz it with a little bit of water. And the land border die is double stitched, so that's how you get, there's still some stitch edging on that extra piece. Then I'm gonna go ahead and spritz it with water, and then I'm gonna heat set with that, my heat tool. And then I'm going to use that same stitch rectangle die and I'm going to line up where I want that to cut off and I'm going to run that through my big shot. Um, a tip when you're only using part of your die, just run it through the big shot just enough to cut the part you need to, not the whole way through because then you're just adding extra cuts to your cutting plate because there's no paper under it. And this will create my little grassy area on my card front here. So now that I have both the pieces trimmed and die cut, I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive to the back of the grass area. And I'm just going to add that down. And then I've got a, um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment onto it. I'm going to use the mini Misty. And I'm also going to use the Ranger Archival Black Ink. It's the same ink I'm also going to stamp my image with to watercolor. 
So I'm just putting the paper into the mini misty or the panel and then I'm using the little uh, grid that you can download and I'm just lining up my image or my sentiment there and then I'm stamping it twice with the Ranger Archival Black ink. My ink pad is pretty used so it takes a little bit extra oomph to get it to come out dark. And then I'm going to go ahead and use another piece of that Distress Ink regular watercolor cardstock and I'm using the smooth side again and I'm going to go ahead and stamp the Newton image. And we're going to color this image in with Distress Ink markers, so that's why we're using the watercolor cardstock. Now I have a piece of uh, like a dark yellow cardstock, and I'm going to go ahead and create an A2 size folding card base, and then I'm going to attach the background panel to that with some with some tape runner. And then we're going to go ahead and start coloring in Newton. And I'm using the Nuvo Aqua water brushes and the markers. I'm using the same color of markers that I use in my leaves, except for I'm adding in a spice marmalade in place of the wild honey because the wild honey marker was a little bit yellow. Because uh, you gotta remember there is a varying shade between your distress inks in each platform that they come in. And then I'm also adding in some vintage photo and real uh, rusty hinge for the color of the cat and a little bit of sponge sugar for the ears. So I'm just coloring those in with again with that's peeled paint, fossilized amber, spiced marmalade, wild honey, sponge sugar, fired brick, and rusty hinge and vintage photo. So I'm just going to go ahead and color and let you guys watch while I do that. Um, I do color the images, I color directly onto the paper. Then I take the water brush over the image and smear it out a little bit. This just gives us a nice light base. And then I go back in and scribble the marker onto the mat to kind of create a palette. Then you pick the color back up and drop it in and it kind of gives more intensifies that color a little bit. And once I've got my image all colored, I'm going to go ahead and heat set that with my heat tool to make sure everything's nice and dry. And then I'm going to use the coordinating die for this stamp set to go ahead and run that through my Big Shot and cut it out. And then to finish off the card, I'm just going to add some foam tape to the back of Newton and adhere him to the bottom panel there. And that pretty much finishes off my card. So I hope you guys enjoy. I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.